What's up guys, welcome back once again to Did Reviews. Doing this video a little bit differently this time, so apologize if my eyes wander because I'm looking at the screen at the same time. Um, but basically today we're gonna be doing a build in the Inwin Mod 3 Mini, uh, the Mod 3 edition. Um, I've previously done an unboxing video of this, um, so if you want to go and check that out and see basically what this case can do and everything like that, then please go and uh, press up there or wherever it is, one of the corners there. Um, and uh, basically today we're going to be doing a build in it, high-end gaming PC build in it. You can just see it behind me there along with my 3D printer and all the mess behind me as well. Um, so let's just quickly take you through the parts uh, and then we'll uh, we'll do the build. I'll show you how, how I put it together and then obviously we'll do some tests at the end. We'll see how well it performs, uh, thermals of the case and things like that. Um, so Inwin Mod 3 mini build, high-end build. Let's go through the parts. So this is uh, where I'm going to be doing the build. I excuse the mess. I've still got a 3D printer over there as well. So um, my space is uh, limited, um, but let's go through the parts. So first of all, here's the case. Inwin Mod 3, uh, Mod 3 Mini Mod 3 Edition. And I've got the ex uh, extra expansion on there for the GPU with the GPU bracket installed already, as I showed in the previous video. Uh, for CPU, we're going with the Ryzen 9 7900X, um, as you can see it's not in there, it's actually already in the board because um, I was put it in there for safekeeping as it was uh, coming out of a different build. Uh, for motherboard we've got the B650E-I gaming Wi-Fi from Asus Strix, um, so nice little board there. For the graphics card we're going with the PowerColor AMD Radeon RX 7900XTX Red Devil, so absolute beast of a card, like I say this is coming from my main PC and we're doing a absolutely amazing build in this today. Um, boxes I haven't got for these at the moment, so we've got the Fury Beast DDR5 2 times 16 gigabytes to make a total of 32 gigabyte, and this is at 5200 I believe, but I can get 5600 out of it. For storage we've got a 2 terabyte P44 Pro from Solidime, and we've got P41 Plus 1 terabyte from Solidime as well. And then for the power supply, we're using the Inwin P2 series. It's the P1052 ATX 3.0, 1050 watt, 80 plus platinum rated. Uh, it's obviously ATX 3.0 and PCIe Gen 5 uh, compatible. So that's the build there. That's what's going in it. Uh, so let's get on with it. One thing I didn't mention in the little intro is the cooler I'm using. So I'm using the... So I'm using the AXP90X53 full copper edition from Thermal Right. Massive thank you to them for sending this over. Now I know you're gonna go, what you're doing using this on the 7900X as it's only rated up to about 143 watts, I believe. Um, but we're gonna see how well it performs and see if it can actually handle this uh, CPU, which is a 170 watt CPU, I believe. And if needs be, we can always put it in eco mode or we can always dial it back a little bit um, just to keep those temperatures down. However, it does come with a, a low profile, uh, sorry, thin 15 mil, yeah, low profile fan, uh, 90 mil, 15 mil thick uh, low profile fan um, in the box with it. Um, but to try and beef it up a little bit, I've bought one of these. This is also from Thermal Right. This is a TLP9S. It's actually RGB as well. It's a 92 mil uh, fan. And this one is a 25 mil thick. Um, so it should provide a little bit more um, in terms of airflow and static pressure over the cooler to hopefully improve the cooling and make it capable. Um, it, on terms of specs, in terms of uh, airflow and static pressure, it is slightly higher than this, the fan that's in here. So fingers crossed, um, we can actually get that working. So first of all, let's prep the motherboard. As you can see, I've got the CPU already in. Um, so we're just gonna give that a clean off because it's still got some old thermal paste on it. So now I've got a nice clean CPU, as you can see. Um, tiny bit of uh, thermal paste still down the, hot, down the sides of it. Um, so first of all, let's get the RAM installed. Like I say, we've got the Fury Beast DDR5. So we're gonna stick that in. So that's the RAM installed. Uh, now we're gonna do the M.2s. So now we've got the motherboard prepped and we've got both SSDs installed, the RAM installed. Now we just need to 
install the cooler. In terms of a thermal paste, we're going to be using the Cryonaut Extreme because I want to give this the best possible chance it can have. And also this is one of the best on the market, so we're popping Cryonaut Extreme on here. So I finally got the cooler installed. Uh, I've had to go a bit jank mode on this. As you can see, I've had to use tie wraps here to tie this fan on because the clips that come with the cooler just aren't big enough to fit a 25 mil thick fan on here. Um, but this is the X53. Um, so with a 25 mil on that, um, obviously it's normal X53 is including the fan normally, which is a 15 mil. So an extra 10 mil gives, takes us a 63 mil, which should be fine for this case, as this can do up to 65 mil. Um, so I'm hoping this cooler is going to perform well enough um, to get us through, um, but we'll find out soon. Um, so now it's time to get the motherboard and everything installed into the actual case. And then once we've done that, we'll get the power supply in and the graphics card, and we should be good to go. Right, so now it's time to install the power supply. Obviously this can take ATX power supplies, as I mentioned before. Um, probably gonna be an absolute mess, as you can see. I've got all this cable to try and get in this tiny little case. Um, so it's gonna be a challenge. Right, so now it's time to install the graphics card, which is gonna go in here. And you can see it's the RX 7900 XTX Red Devil. And you can see it's gonna fit in there absolutely lovely. One thing I would say is definitely this uh, case could do with some sort of port support down the bottom there, just to stop the graphic card from kind of swinging about inside there. It isn't going to go anywhere, um, but it would have been nice to see that. Let's take this back panel off just for now, um, just so I can get everything fed in properly. Right, so I'm just going to. I'm going to run all the cables and everything, and I'll show you the basically with the finished build at the, at the end of this. Right, so the graphics card in, and we'll just spin around that and show you that. Um, as you can see, I've had to get a little bit creative here. My PCIe riser basically is too big to, to go in this hole, so I've had to dremel it out, and apologies in -win for cutting up this, <laughs> that bracket, but it was a necessary evil, I'm afraid, to get this to go in. And uh, basically, this is the GPU in. Um, unfortunately, I'm going to have to mess around with the cables down here, um, as they're very... They're starting to... Basically, where the riser cable is behind it, it's pushing the graphics cord up a bit and sort of angling it a bit, which is, uh, yeah, it's not the best. But um, I'd basically say, if you're doing this, make sure you get the right riser cable for it. I just didn't have time to get a riser cable. I didn't have time to get a riser cable um, that would work other than the one I've already got. Um, so I'm just hoping that none of this is gonna cut into the riser cable itself and cause it to short out um, because it is, a very tight squeeze in there. As you can see here, the inner inner bit of the rise cable is fine, but out here it's kind of stretched. So you need a probably a bit of a longer one, maybe, or one that's just a bit more flexible. But I've kind of sorted that out now, and it seems to sit a bit nice. I've managed to get that last cable around the back, uh, and hopefully it's not going to give me any issues now. But that's the graphics card in. Obviously, as you can see, it fits massive graf graphics cards in here. Now, for one little final touch, uh, I was going to put an RGB fan in here, but I thought I'm going to go for ultra sort of performance and airflow. Apologies for the dog if you can hear him. Um, so ultra performance and airflow, hopefully, in here, uh, and then we're going to we're going to stick the SAM120 Pro in here. I believe this is called. Sorry, Neptune DN120 Pro we've got in here, which Inwin sent me as well, so thanks to them. Um, so we're gonna have 
hopefully plenty and plenty of airflow in here. So I'm just going to install that now and then uh, we'll show you the final, final build at the end. Right, so we've got the build done in the Inwin Mod 3 Mini Mod 3 Edition. Um, as I mentioned previously, it comes in a Mod 2 as well, which is obviously smaller. Um, and if you're doing the GPU uh, portion of it as well, that will obviously reduce the amount of GPU you can get in there. I think it's like up to 320 mil. Whereas with this one, it's up to 420, I believe. Um, so pretty much any GPU in this. Uh, now, the build went reasonably well. A few hiccups here and there. Not really the case's fault, more sort of me not having the right things to do it. Um, so one of them was the PCIe riser for the GPU. Not really the right type of uh, riser that I've got. Basically, the, the bit that goes into the GPU is a bit too chunky, so I've had to basically cut a bit out of the GPU bracket to get it to fit in. Um, but as long as you get the right the GPU riser cable, one of the standard ones, basically, which is uh, 90 degrees, um, with like the bit where you can actually attach it down to um, flat against like a surface this has has the ability to do that as well and um, then you should be no, no problems with it at all um, other than that EPS cables I had struggled to get in because I'd put everything in and then tried to route it and it's really tight gap so I ended up having to drop the motherboard tray down to get it in but again that's just prior planning would have uh, prevented me having that issue um, and other than that not really any issues at all in terms of the build and how easy it is to build in um, RTX builds are generally more difficult than an ATX build um, but this one was actually relatively easy to do. Um, obviously, it's not the smallest ITX build. Um, there's much smaller cases out there. But for this kind of hardware, it's actually not bad. Uh, in terms of height, it's obviously massive. Um, it's sort of full, uh, I'd say, ATX size in terms of height. Um, I don't know if you can see on the camera. Just swivel that round. That's a normal ATX case next to it. Well, it's a relatively small ATX case. Excuse all the 3D prints. Um, and I can see it's actually taller than that. Um, so in terms of height, it's actually quite big. Um, but obviously, as you can see now, in terms of the desk space it takes up, it's actually not a lot at all. Um, it's not just not much at all. Um, obviously, if you're doing it without the expansions on it and just a single tower, even less uh, space it take up. Um, so obviously, it depends on what kind of build you want to do. Um, personally, I can't imagine many people are going to buy this just to do an APU build in just a single a single mod. Um, most people are going to want to uh, add at least a GPU um, expansion to it. Um, so this is course kind of the size you're looking at. Obviously, the Mod 2 version will be just be uh, not as tall. In terms of depth and width, it's going to be exactly the same, um, but it won't, just won't be as tall. Um, so other than that, right, uh, yeah, let's do some performance testing, um, see how it gets on. Um, I don't expect the CPU temperatures to be very good um, because it's a... Cooler rated for 143 watts, and this can pull 180 odd, uh, if not more, uh, when it's at full tilt. Um, but obviously, it will throttle itself 
as needs be to keep it um, where it needs to be. Um, other than that, I've got a I've got an extra fan in there intaking, um, but it is quite loud. So apologies if you hear that. Um, I think it's just the way because it's right up against the grill. It's it's quite loud and this is a high performance fan, so it spins spins really fast. Um, and I've got quite an aggressive curve on the CPU fan, but you can't actually hear that over the case fan that's on it really. Um, and I've got a relatively aggressive one on the GPU as well, just to see just how well it performs. So we'll, we'll do some testing uh, for thermals. Um, I'll pull the side panels off, um, and then we'll see how well it performs, if it performs much better without the side panels. I might not be able to tell because it might just go straight to 95 degrees and stay there and just bring the clocks down because obviously the cooler's not really up to it. Um, obviously the GPU will be able to get a better idea of how well it uh, it can call in this case uh, and then I'll show you a few gaming benchmarks so you can see how well the system performs uh, overall. Um, so let's get on with the testing and see how well the uh, thermals are. Right so hopefully you can see this, um, we're currently running um, like I say a ra rather aggressive uh, rather aggressive uh, curve on the fans for the CPU and uh, basically this is sat idle on the desktop, it's been sat here for about five minutes now um, whilst I was doing the other bits. Um, you would have seen it in the background as well. Uh, as you can see, we're idling at 52 degrees on the CPU, 63 on the package, so relatively high, obviously. Um, when I've done previous testing with AIOs and things like that, you normally, you normally idle around 30 odd, 35 sort of degrees, so obviously we're quite high on the idle temperatures. Um, I've previously done, I didn't bother showing it, I've previously done a test with it, with AI optimized from Asus, um, I've done the AI optimized overclocking um, to see how see what it'd do, and it was pulling over 180 watts, and basically was getting straight up to 95 degrees on the CPU and up to about 100 on the package, flot, flot, throttling itself back down, and was sitting around 4.8 gigahertz on most of the cores. As you hopefully can see here, we're looking at like 5.3, 5.4. Um, it, that it's getting up to. Obviously, it's not doing anything at the moment, um, but that's sort of what it's able to get to at the moment. Um, let's just come down and have a look at the power. CPU package power at the moment is at 60 watts. The maximum it's got so far is 82. Uh, I have put it into eco mode now um, to see how well it performs, um, basically give it a better chance of uh, actually being able to do something. Uh, I will say my Cinebench score before was 26,000 and changed, 26,200 or something, so we'll see how well it performs on Eco. Um, and obviously that was throttling to 4.8, so we'll see how well this goes. So let's start this test up. Um, we'll just do a, a single run of it, obviously. We're not gonna know for sure without heat soaking it. Um, but obviously, we, I just want to see how well it performs compared to what it did last time, which on a single run got straight to 95 degrees. Uh, so let's have a go. As you can see, we've gone straight up to 95 degrees again. Uh, so there's no point in really doing a, a full 10 minute load on it. Straight up to 95 degrees and we're down to 4.8 straight away. Um, this isn't going to be an issue for the case. It's not the case's fault for this. It's the cooler. So I'd definitely recommend a better cooler or maybe if you can fit a 120 AIO in there, it might do a little bit better. Let's see what power it's pulling. Um, for some reason it's pulling 150 watts still, even though I've put eco mode on, so I'm not quite sure what's happening there. And we've got a 26371, so we actually did better. Um, for some reason it doesn't seem like eco mode's actually working, um, so I'm not sure. But that's that's by the by really. Um, you can see how well it performs in terms of, it's getting a decent score to be fair, 26371 at 4.8 GHz is not too bad. So just bear in mind, uh, depending on what call you get, if you're doing this kind of build, then you are going to lose a little bit of performance from a 7900X. It's not geared for this. Uh, I'd recommend probably a 7800X 3D if you're doing it for a gaming build, um, because that's a lower what what is TDP on that CPU, and obviously it's generally better for gaming anyway. Um, so that's that one done. Let's get a... GPU test done. Right, so let's do some GPU temperature testing. Uh, as you can see here, idling at 45 degrees. Um, not too bad. I'm not sure what it normally idles up to be honest with you, but the fans aren't running at the moment, so it's not doing anything. Um, so it's not got any active cooling at the moment, it's just sitting there at 45 degrees. So hopefully not an issue. So we're gonna use super, uh, Superposition Benchmark by Unigen. What I'm gonna do it at is 1440, I'm gonna do it on an extreme and high on there. I just want to see what temperatures it gets to. Right, so we're now running the Unigen Superposition. You can just see it off to one side, um, just here. Um, 
<laughs> and as you can hear, the GPU is kicked straight in. I've got an aggressive curve on this at the moment. So running at 1440p, uh, extreme and high on the settings. And at the moment, you can see we're getting up to 69 degrees. Um, but we'll run this now. Uh, I'll catch back up the end and show you basically what it's running at. Uh, see what temperature it got to. And then uh, we'll basically pop the panel off and have a look there. Right, so hopefully you can see on screen now, um, obviously the test has ended uh, and obviously it's dropped straight back down to the 49 degrees straight after that. Uh, the maximum we got there was 73 degrees, an average of 45 degrees. Um, so not too bad in terms of temperatures at all. Um, obviously, one thing I will say on this is there is no exhaust, so there's no way of it, the system really getting the hot air back out of the case. So it's going to circulate, recirculate some of it. Um, so that's probably why it is a little bit higher than normal. I mean, this. Obviously, this test is meant to push your GPU, um, really, so it is obviously not the same as going into a game, um, but you can get an average, you can get sort of an idea. So what I'm going to do now is pop the panel off, run the test again, and then I'll show you back at the end again, see if we've got any difference in terms of temperature, uh, and we'll see how we, get, how we went. Right, so I've done the testing with the panels off, so I've taken basically all the panels off the top, the sides. Um, the only one I've not taken off is the back, um, just because obviously it's got the, the display cable, go, display port cable going through it. And we've got a maximum on that one of 71 degrees. Ignore the average at 63 degrees, the last one was 45. Um, it's just obviously, the, I forgot to reset it on, on the last one um, before starting it up and whatnot. Um, so 71 degrees, dropped a couple of degrees, not a massive increase at all uh, a little bit yeah um, so it shows that the case has got a decent airflow um, I have removed the dust filters from it um, because for some reason they were making a, I think it's because the fan was right up against it on the CPU side uh, it was making a right noise um, so 71 degrees dropped a couple of degrees there not an issue whatsoever um, so the the actual uh, airflow of this case is is pretty decent um, <coughs> I can't really complain about it at all um, so that's that um, let's uh, just quickly do some a couple of gaming benchmarks. Uh, we'll chuck, we'll throw Cyberpunk on, and we'll see we'll see what happens there. Right, so now we're looking at Cyberpunk again. You can probably hear the GPU wearing up. I've got, like I say, a um, aggressive curve on it, uh, and we're looking at 69, 70 degrees in gaming and 106 FPS. So I've got a FSR on set of quality, um, just to. Give it that little bit of a push, but yeah, we're looking at 100 over 100 uh, FPS here, uh, looking absolutely stunning. Um, as usual, looks absolutely beautiful, no problems whatsoever there. CPU temps around 78 degrees, 77, so not an issue for the not an issue here, here really. That's that guy dispatched anyway, so you can see decent uh, performance on here. I uh, just wanted to give you a quick show of how well it performs in, these, in, in this game um, as a system as a whole and over 100 FPS on Cyberpunk. Um, so doing very, very well there. Uh, we'll just do one more game to give you an idea. Right, it's just going to run a quick benchmark test on F1 2023. I know it's not the uh, brand new one, is it? Isn't it the newest one? Yeah, it is, I think. Uh, 2023, just to see how well it performs. We've got uh, 5120 by 1440, uh, or whatever the screen, yeah, 5120 by 1440 ultra wide, almost 4K resolution. Um, we're doing ultra settings, ray tracing's off, and we've got SF FSR set to quality. And basically, like I said, everything's uh, top settings apart from ray tracing. And uh, we're basically just running the benchmark to see how well it performs. And as you can see, we're getting 200 odd frames per second. GPU's getting 72, 70 odd degrees, um, which isn't too bad at all. Um, depends on the game, really, on how hot this GPU gets to be fair um, and this one's yeah it's, it's relatively hot but it's not too bad at all um, sort of similar to what I see during most games to be honest um, but absolutely over 200 frames per second absolutely fantastic this this system's performing very very well um, even though um, the CPU will be throttling down a little bit to keep those temperatures down and the CPU temperature is nearly 80 degrees at the moment. Um, so it will be throttling a little bit probably, um, but we're still getting absolutely fantastic results. Um, so lastly, I'm just going to run uh, 
run a 3D, uh, run a 3D mark test uh, to see how well it performs in there in terms of where it sits in terms of um, in the world sort of category uh, and we'll see how, how we get on with it uh, and then we'll go back up top and we'll have a look, talk about uh, basically the whole system as a whole. Right so we've run the time spy uh, benchmark on 3D mark and you can see we've got a score of 25708 overall, graphic score of 30504 and a CPU of 13596 giving us an estimated performance of 200 plus FPS and Battlefield 5 at 1440p ultra. Um, Looking at compared, um, average score is 25.510, we've got 25.708, and the best is 34.72, um, so not too bad. We're at the high end of uh, people with the same hardware as, as this sort of build. Um, we'll just compare tests online so we can see where we sit overall. And as you can see, we're better than 97% of all results. So we're doing pretty well. Um, yeah, we're doing very, very well, to be fair. Um, it's, it's above what they call a high-end gaming PC and just below a premium gaming PC, um, so sort of in the middle there. Uh, and like I say, better than 97% of all results. So I'm happy with that. I believe this system's turned out very, very well. Uh, so let's go back up top and have a little chat about it and then we'll sign off from there. Right, so there we have it. My high-end gaming PC build in the InWin Mod 3, Mod 3 edition, uh, mini ITX case um, and Yes, to be honest with you, as you've seen from the results, uh, really happy with how this turned out. Uh, done, it's doing really, really well in terms of performance. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, gaming, no problem whatsoever. Um, CPUs doing all right, to be fair, uh, for gaming anyway. Um, so absolutely uh, really blown away by this, to be honest with you. Uh, my, my biggest thing for this is the way it looks. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. It's one of the best looking cases I've seen. Um, if not the best in terms of, especially in terms of ITX builds. Um, I know a lot of people are doing the wood thing now. Uh, Inman have jumped on that bandwagon and are, I've, I've nailed it to be honest with you. Um, the, the, the amount of wood on this as well is incredible. Um, it's the most I've seen on any. Um, the panels are so well built. Everything's really well built on this to be honest with you. And the fact that it can bolt onto your, um, if you've got the mod free, the, 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 big case version you can actually stick this on the side of it if you wanted to somewhere and basically have two pcs in one case sort of thing and it'll look absolutely amazing if you want to see um how that would look um then obviously let me know in the comments section below and i can do an extra video on that and basically put a build in there and then stick this on the side of it and you can see sort of what it looks like and that kind of thing so if you want to see that uh, let me know and we'll go from there um but yeah other than that Performs really well and looks absolutely amazing. Um, what more can I say? Um, so a few things I want to talk about um, in terms of uh, cooling. Obviously, it's not the case's fault. It's down to the CPU cooler. Um, as we've shown, as we've shown with the GPU test, airflow is fi uh, fine in this. They're not an issue at all. A few degrees different, um, but not a problem. Um, so it's not the case's fault in terms of the CPU cooling. It is the cooler itself, um, which is the AXP 90X53 from Thermalright. I'm not saying it's a bad cooler. It's a very, very good cooler, um, especially at the price. Uh, the fact that it's a full copper um, and it's so small, it actually does a very good job, um, but it's not enough to handle this at full capacity. Um, for some reason, my eco mode didn't work. I don't know why. Um, I'll look into that and I'll try and put a comment in the comment section below. Um, so you can see if I, if actually I had any luck with that. Um, but yeah, the, the the cooler itself isn't up to this. I have put a, even put a bigger fa put the thicker fan on it as well to try and improve it. And obviously, it's still struggling. And um, there is a bracket that you can get for this uh, to put a one twenty mil on it, which I might do. Um, and I'll, I might do a follow up video with that. Someone's already done it on on, on YouTube already. So if you want to go and look at that, um, let me know, and I'll, I'll find find the link or just search for it, and you'll see it. Um, but I might do it myself, I might do a video and see how well I can, uh, if I can bring the temps down on this at all, or if if not bring the temps down, bring the clocks up, um, so it doesn't throttle as much, like I said, get down to 4.8 gigahertz on most of the cores, um, whereas it can it can go like 5.3 uh, when it's got sufficient cooling, uh, and it can go more than that actually, uh, depending on what you do with it in terms of overclocking and things like that. Um, so, overall, however, um, based on on that the cpu call the cpu was fine during gaming absolutely fine yes we're getting low to mid 80s which is obviously warm um but it's absolutely fine not a problem at all um it's just the cinebench score it, it absolutely went through the roof but in terms of gaming not a problem whatsoever so if you if you are looking at this cooler and it is for a gaming pc you will be okay um on a cpu like this 
you will be fine, to be honest with you. Um, like I say, on the gaming side of the things, it wasn't a problem at all. Maybe it'll be different on the more CPU intensive games, um, but that was including Time Spy, including Superposition, uh, and including the games I did, so Cyberpunk and F1. It was still mid mid to low 80s, um, so absolutely no problem on temperature there. Um, like I say, it's warm, I know, um, but it's not a problem. Um, so for gaming, absolutely fantastic. Uh, as you saw, the 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 performance of it in terms of game was absolutely fantastic. 97%, top 97% of results on Time Spy. Cyberpunk ran beautifully. F1 ran beautifully. It looks absolutely fantastic. Um, so that's it, really. Uh, one thing, the last thing I'm going to talk about is the price. Um, and I apologise, Edwin. I absolutely love your cases and I love that you're doing things differently. But the price of this is a lot. It's a lot of money. Um, would it obviously depends on, on the person whether they'd, they'd be happy to pay this. You do pay a premium for a premium ITX case, I know that. Um, so it, this is more towards those guy, those people out there that want to do a really premium, unique sort of PC and are happy to spend a lot of money on a case. Um, the people that are really into their small form factor stuff, um, it is a lot of money. Uh, the setup I've got as it stands, I believe, if you were to buy it without, I already had one of the modules from my Mod 3 and they just gave me the panels for it. But if you were to buy it separately, the case on its own with a worn up finish is 214 euros. Um, obviously that comes with the panels. Uh, and then for an extra module, the modules aren't too bad. I think they're only about like 30 euros or something like that. And they're not a lot. It's the panels that are expensive. They're about 160 euros for the, for the panels. Uh, the, the walnut ones anyway, so that's a lot of money. Then you've got the GPU bracket if you want to do that. That's another 20 odd euros, I believe. Um, yeah, and that's the other, other brackets that you might want to do. You've got a riser if you haven't already got one. Things like that. So it is a lot of money. I understand it. It's a lot of money. So you're probably looking at over 400 euros um, to do it as I've got it here. If you want to do just the APU version, then you're looking at uh, 215 basically with the walnut finish. So bear that in mind if you are looking at this kind of case, and uh, I know it is probably going to put some people off, um, but it is it is a stunning case. It is really, really nice. It's very different, um, and Inwin are obviously known for that, doing things differently, and I applaud them for that. Um, but obviously let me know what you think in the comment section below. Is the price too much? Is Would this put you off, or are you one of those people that are like, I really want this case i really want a premium looking wood finished case and i'm happy to spend that kind of money let me know in the comment section below but one thing i will say by the end of july uh, i believe um the other panels are coming out for it so you're gonna be able to get a mesh panel and you're also gonna get acrylic panels and they'll be on the on their website i'll link in the description below which I, i'm assuming are going to be cheaper than the walnut um obviously walnut's expensive uh and there's a lot of walnut on this for a pc case i know it's obviously uh, only small strips dotted across but for 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 a pc case that's a lot of wood that's on there um so it's obviously not cheap to manufacture so that is why it's so expensive um but at the end of the day i think it looks amazing and it performs amazing as well so let me know what you think in the comment section below um don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and please give me a like if you like this video if you didn't like it obviously that's fine give it a dislike or just don't do anything it's entirely up to you um but i hope you enjoyed this video and uh, thank you for watching guys and i'll see you guys in the next one goodbye